Yo guys, how's it going? AK Motor here, welcome back to another video. One super common issue with these smaller carbureted dirt bikes is they'll sit for a while, the fuel on the carburetor will go bad, gum up, and you won't be able to start the bike the next time you go to start it. So today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to clean the carburetor on a Yamaha TTR 110 right behind me, or this is gonna be pretty much the same process for any four stroke smaller dirt bike. Uh, once you get to the bigger bikes, it does get a little more complicated, but it's pretty much the same for these little air-cooled trail bikes uh, for most bikes. So let's get right into this. Today, again, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to clean uh, specifically the TTR 110's carb, but again, it's more or less the same process for most you know, smaller trail bikes. So what'll happen is a lot of times if the bike sits for a longer period of time, a lot of these small nozzles and jets in the carburetor will become clogged up due to fuel going bad. Uh, it's just something that happens with these smaller carburetors because they have smaller passages in them. It's easier for your dirt, debris, and just bad fuel to get clogged up in them. Um, but luckily it is gonna be a pretty easy fix on this bike and uh, let's get right into this. So luckily guys, you really won't need a whole lot of tools for this job. All you're gonna need is a couple of screwdrivers, um, generally on the smaller end of the range, a flat head and a Phillips. You're also gonna need some Allen wrenches to actually take the carburetor off and loose so you can access everything. And of course, if you have some carburetor cleaner, that'll be ideal. Here I just have some general purpose parts cleaner and then some shop towels are always very useful to have. All right guys, so the first thing we have to do is make sure our float bowl is empty. This will make things a little cleaner uh, through the whole process. So here you wanna make sure your fuel pet cock is in the off position. And then you have a small screw here at the bottom of the float bowl on the carb and you just wanna loosen that up and that'll allow fuel to come out of the overflow line. And then here I just have a gas tank just to catch it. So we're just gonna wait for that to stop draining and then we'll tear into the carb. All right, once we have our float bowl drained, we have two five millimeter Allen screws to remove and then there's a plastic piece that sits between this, I guess you could call it an intake manifold and the carb. There's a small plastic piece. Uh, there's a good chance that'll fall out. So uh, you can just keep that and then make sure when you do go to reassemble this that these two tabs are facing up. Just a little trick here for this back Allen. Uh, it can be a little tough to get to sometimes, so I like to kind of position my Allen key like this, and then I'll just get some pliers and use it as an extension to uh, loosen that up, just like that. If you're using these type of Allen keys, if you're using more of like a socket style and a ratchet, you shouldn't really have to worry about this. Now here, I'm just gonna pull this little plastic plate off because it's gonna wanna fall and uh, we can just pull it on out just like that. And this is how it sits in the bike. And there's actually two O-rings. There's an O-ring here on the intake manifold and an O-ring on the carb body itself. Uh, most of the time those will stay in place though, so I'm not gonna remove them, but just make sure those don't fall out at any time in the process. And uh, make sure those are both there when you go to reassemble everything. All right, so now that we have the carburetor unbolted from the intake manifold, just those two Allen bolts, we can wiggle it around and get better access to all of our float bolt screws. So now to remove our float bowl here, we just have four Phillips head screws on each corner. Here with the float bowl removed, you just want to take a look inside and clean it out and make sure there's no dirt, gunk, buildup, anything like that. And this one looks pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good, not gonna cause any issues. And then here we have a pretty good view of our main and pilot jet. So the pilot jet is the smaller one right here, and then this is our main jet, the bigger one right here. Um, now, in most cases, your pilot jet is will be what clogs because it is the smaller of the two, and it is kind of what runs the idle circuit in the lower RPMs. Um, generally, you won't really have any issues with your main jet, but it's always worth to check both of them. Um, but here I'm gonna pull out the pilot real quick and show you how to check and see if a jet is clogged. All right guys, so I'll put some pictures on the screen on what your main and pilot jet should look like. You should be able to see light through them. Um, as you guys can tell, the pilot jet has a very, very small uh, whole orifice size, so it's definitely pretty easy for it to get clogged. Um, and it can actually be pretty easy to uh, kind of miss a little piece of dirt. So I find just holding the jets up to the light really works well for making sure that the jets are free and clear. And uh, again, with the pilot being such a small hole, that one's generally gonna be the one that gives you issues. Um, as the main jet definitely has a bigger sized hole, it's a little less likely to get clogged up with fuel, dirt, or whatever it is. 
And uh, yeah, so everything actually looks good on this bike. I knew going in that this carb didn't have any issues, but I wanted to bring you guys this video. And uh, yeah, so if you do have dirt in the jets, go ahead and clean those bad boys out with carb clean the best you can and uh, make sure that hole is free and clear. But once you've verified everything looks good, we can now uh, reassemble everything pretty much the exact opposite of the disassembly. Now, if carb clean just isn't cutting it, you can actually buy toolkits online uh, made specifically for cleaning carburetors. And a lot of the times they'll come with little mini brushes and stuff that you can gently poke through the uh, jets. Now you wanna be very careful with poking things through the jets because they are made of brass and they can be damaged pretty easily as brass is a pretty soft metal. Um, now, if you're in an absolute pinch and you don't have any carburetor cleaning tools kind of like these, you can actually use a wire brush, uh, something like this. This is actually a drill attachment for one, but you can kind of bend one of these little individual wires out of the way and use that to kind of poke through the jet. Again, you really want to be very, very careful. Most of the time, in my experience, you can get the jets pretty cleaned out with just some carb clean. Um, but if you really have a piece of stuck debris in there, this is something you can try as well. Um, if you do, you know, have these little carburetor cleaning tools, in my opinion, these work way better. Um, but in a pinch, you know, I've made this work, as you guys can see, a couple times here. I just bend one little wire off the wire brush and poke that through the jet. And most of the time, that'll work pretty well. But that's really only if you have some really lodged in there debris and dirt. Uh, most of the time, carburetor cleaner will do just fine. All right, guys, so sorry if this skips around a little bit. My SD card got filled up and I had to clear some space off it. I'm not sure what the last video clip you guys saw was. But anyway, so here I have the foldable back on. So for installing the jets, you really just gotta put them in hand tight and just snug them down. You really don't wanna put a lot of torque on the jets because they are made of brass and strip very, very easily. Um, so you really don't need a lot of torque on those. And then same thing with these full bowl screws. You really don't need much torque at all. If you go on putting a ton of torque on these, it's just gonna make it super hard to remove for the next time. Um, so you really don't need to put a lot of power into tightening these. Um, just nice and snug, that's it. So once you have the foot bolt back on, jets in place, and then our foot bolt back on with the four screws, again, pretty much everything is the reverse of disassembly. Um, so now we're gonna bolt our carburetor back to the intake manifold, don't forget. There's a little plastic piece that goes between the two. And just double check here, you guys can see the O-ring on the carb side is still there, and then there's an O-ring on the intake manifold side, and I can see it. You guys probably can't see it, but I can see it's still in there as well. Just wanna double check that those are both still there. Then we can slide this plastic piece back in. Now we can reinstall our two Allen head screws. And we really don't need these to be super tight either. You can put a little more torque on these than the football screws, um, but these really don't need to be tight. Uh, here I just use my little Allen key and I just use the shorter end of it to tighten these two down and I get it as tight as I can with the short end of this Allen key and that is more than tight enough in my experience. And there we go, everything's put back together. Here I'm gonna turn the fuel petcock on. We can just double check, we don't have any leaks, we shouldn't. And then that is a quick carb clean. So yeah, cleaning the carburetor on this Yamaha TTR 110 really is a pretty easy process and it's pretty much the same for most 110cc trail bikes and even sm slightly smaller ones like 50s and even bigger ones like 125 four strokes. Um, it's pretty much the same process for these trail bikes. Uh, these carburetors are definitely pretty simple. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this quick little video. Hopefully, hopefully you guys found it helpful. Now I've made a couple other videos on this 110 like how to do an oil change and air filter service and a couple other ones. So if you guys wanna check those out and it's gonna be in the top right of your screen but uh, yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you have, please leave a like and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.